Hello, this is Math Kimchi, and today we'll be implementing collisions. And before you watch this video, I recommend that you watch uh, my previous video on uh, N Body Physics Simulator, uh, where I left off uh, with implementing a collision that kind of works but doesn't really work. And uh, let me show you what it looks like right now. So you can see the gravity looks kind of normal, but then the collisions uh, look pretty off. And that's because right now the way I'm implementing it is by just multiplying everything, uh, multiplying the vectors of the two bodies by negative one. And uh, something I changed in between the previous video and in this video is uh, adding this uh, vector twos, which uses uh, X and Y's, which are doubles. Uh, instead of using an array of doubles. And the reason why I did that is because uh, then I can have uh, methods for the vectors. And I also think that it's just, uh, it just makes more sense to use vectors. And yeah, I also changed the names of the, of some of the variables. So pause used to be chords and now it stands for position. There's also a vel which stands for velocity. And previously it used to be vels for, uh, velocities because it was like an x velocity and a y velocity but um, those are pretty just uh, minor changes and I also had to make everything work with vectors uh, so I changed some stuff and body I'm pretty sure is pretty similar and main as well. Uh, and by that, I mean the logic behind it. And yeah, so uh, let's implement collisions now. Or uh, yeah, I guess I can go over uh, the vector two class. So as I said, they it has two doubles, uh, X and Y, and the reason why I'm using doubles is just because I didn't want it. Uh, I didn't want to use an integer uh, because then it would uh, it would be pretty hard to do all the math uh, with integers, and also I could have done something like yeah this I'm pretty sure but uh if I had done that then it would have been annoying to constantly write uh like vector two and then uh angle bracket double and then close uh because you know that just be unnecessary in my that was just unnecessary in my opinion and I didn't see any scenario where it would be better for me to use integers rather than doubles so I just I'll use doubles and there's three ways of creating a vector you can either give it nothing uh, which makes it just zero zero or you can make it uh, or you could give it uh, two doubles uh, the first one being x, the second one being y. Or you could have given it an array of doubles, uh, which works similar to this. And there's also get, which just turns this vector. It returns this vector as an array of doubles. And I don't think I use it, but I just thought it might be useful. And there's also inc, which stands for increase or increment and it's like plus equals and there's also add 
which is like just plus and this one the static one works like this and then v1 v2 whereas uh this it will work like uh v1 dot uh and add just returns the sum and i could have called it sum but i didn't and there's also and by the way uh, ink basically what it does is it takes the sum and just wait uh ink what it does is it adds it increases by the other vector so yeah that's why i said it's like plus equals because it's not returning anything but uh because the vector itself is getting changed and there's also prod which is like just the um a vector times a scalar and that's what it returns and malt uh is the same thing as prod, but it changes this vector rather than returning a new vector. And yeah, I think that's about it to explain what I did. And yeah, I already showed you guys uh, what it looks like right now. And you can see uh, this is supposed to have greater mass, but is like affected equally or the same I guess and that's not really supposed to happen uh, because when a big object and a small object hit each other usually the small object is more impacted by the collision rather than the them both being pretty equally changed and uh, for this video I'm probably just gonna implement uh, elastic collisions meaning there's nothing like spinning or any force being lost as heat with like friction and stuff uh, but uh, I'm going to be implementing collisions using this formula from Wikipedia and uh, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm citing the wrong thing here because I was looking into this earlier uh, and yeah that that site I think uh, was a little bit different but uh, anyways this formula is, or uh, this is the formula I'm going to use, and uh, v one's just the original velocity, and v prime of one is the new velocity after the collision, and m two is the mass of the second object, m one is the mass of the second the first object and this I'm pretty sure is distance and then this is just squared and the angle brackets here it says that it's just a dot product and yeah this is just right uh x1 oh so x1 and x2 are just uh the the positions i guess the positions of the centers so yeah i guess uh 
we should start implementing it. And I guess the first thing we should do is the distance and also the dot product. So uh, I guess you can have it at the end, public. And okay. and then this takes in a vector two uh, Actually, I'm going to copy the three things we have for add and just uh, change it to be dot prod. And yeah, so the way you calculate dot product is you just go through all the dimensions and the product for so the nth dimension is going to be the vector ones n top plus or uh, times a uh, vector twos n so I guess that would just be this and There's a space here for some reason. Uh, so we got dot product, and then we have uh, we have to find the distance. But uh, actually, we don't need to find just the distance because the reason why we need it is because we're going to square it so that means we can just find the distance squared uh, because distance uh, you're taking a square root and squaring it again so that's just a waste of time and this uh, I guess we can call it that. And this doesn't take in anything. And yeah, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So that'd be x. Hmm. I don't know if there's a squared in Java you probably it's probably like power mass dot yeah power and I mean we really don't need to do it like this we could just do this dot x times this dot x and do that but uh, I guess it doesn't matter and uh, it is true that if this were negative, then we'd have to take the absolute value of it. But since this is a square, it's guaranteed to be positive. And this is a square, so it's also positive, you know, because we're working with real numbers. And a positive plus a positive is going to be positive. So we don't really need to care about that. And also... Or I guess it could also be zero, but uh, this is also fine when it's zero. And yeah, so I think we have everything for vector two. I guess we can create something called.
right. and I'm not really sure if we should have the collision inside of main or body. Hmm. I think it would be better to have it in body. Yeah, I think it would. And, yeah. Hmm, I wonder. We should probably have a static void. Hmm, I don't. Because we can either have a static void, like, collision, and it takes in, like, body B1 and body B2. And it, like, takes care of everything. Or we could probably have something called... Where it's, like, B1 dot collision and then B2. And maybe this could return... velocity and yeah I think that probably works as well and yeah we can have that and then this can use that so ink or er, mm, we can have it called new vector after hmm. after collision. okay that that's kind of a bad name uh, but I guess it's fine for now. Body and <clears throat> other and Yeah, so this is going to be V1 and other is going to be V2. So return Oh wow. It's going to be All right, so dot vel oh and, and it's kind of annoying uh, with Java because you can't override operations uh, because I think in Python when you have two classes or, or like a custom class then you can have a function called underscore underscore add underscore underscore or something like that and then when you do like o1 plus o2 then it does like o1 dot underscore underscore add and then o2 i'm pretty sure uh, but yeah, they don't have that in Java, even though it would be pretty helpful. But, uh, right, so this entire thing is this, and then it's like scalar multiplication. 
So we first have to calculate this and then the scalar. So I, I guess we should also have something called subtract or difference. And if I call this difference, then it would make much more sense to add, turn add into sum, but uh, yeah, I can change that later. dot vel So it's going to be this times this. So that's this dot uh, pause diff other. Should probably do get pause uh, in case I decide to make this private. But right now it's a little too complicated already, so maybe I'll change that later if I need to. And then, so this is going to be this, and we have to do dot. Multiply or something like that. Dot prod product and so the first thing we have is this number, and I'm assuming uh, this just means that I have to multiply this times this times this I'm not really sure why there's why it's like not connected but maybe it's just for the logic or something like that at least that's what I'm hoping uh, so other dot m divided by So, in the pink parentheses, it's going to be this fraction, or a, uh, hmm. Well, maybe I can just do this times this divided by this times this. But I'm actually just going to follow this for the cleanlessness I don't know if that's a word but and one <clears throat> All right so the pink one is done so this one is done and all that's left is to find this 
then we have to multiply this by Actually, it might have been a bad idea to use uh, dot diff instead of using the static version. Uh, but uh, that's fine for now, I guess. It, it makes it a little shorter, but I also feel like it makes it harder to read. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna here. Hmm. Maybe it's possible to just import vector. Oh, this was a class. It's interesting. Import vector two dot. I guess, I guess it doesn't work as I thought. Right. Yeah, if that doesn't work, I'm just gonna use like v1.notpod. So, it's gonna be v1. Uh, this dot val dot diff let's try hmm. maybe I should have like vector two v one equals this dot val and I can do that for v1, v2, m1, m2, and x1, x2. But, hmm, I don't know. That would be a waste of time. All right, uh, but anyways, let's do, all right, v1. Is inner, mm, let me see, just to make sure. Okay, maybe I should look at dot product. So is it just supposed to be the sum? Oh yeah, it's the sum, all right. And I guess this entire thing is the same thing as doing the dot product of itself.
and yeah, I guess that kind of makes dist square useless, but maybe not. So I have this, so I should find the dot pod of this and Well, wow. uh, this is getting kind of crazy right now. All right. Um, in the blue is this, and in the pink, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be this entire thing. So we can do. Divided by I'm just going to do one as a placeholder. I guess there's an extra parentheses. And then So I'm just going to assume that this works, uh, but seeing how complicated it is, I won't be surprised if it doesn't, uh, but right. So v vector two, new v1, new v2. V one equals val b one dot val after collision temp and u v two equals v two dot val after collision and uh dot new dot val equals new v1 v2 dot val new v2 alright And uh, this actually should probably go outside because uh, I think it would make more sense to do it after all the math for this is done. All the forces are calculated. Or, hmm. Well, actually, it doesn't matter if we do it before or after we do this because the only thing this changes is the force and the only thing this changes is the velocity and this doesn't take in velo this isn't affected by velocity and this also isn't affected by force so I guess it is fine to have it there but uh, I'm just gonna run it uh, previous what it uh, looks like without our new code. All right, so it looks like that. Uh, and as I said, one of the problems is that it doesn't really work 
with uh, with different masses and also if there's a ball coming from this direction and there's another ball coming from this direction but slightly higher up when they collide uh, what it how it is right now it's just gonna go like this and the other one's gonna go like this at least that's what I th think is gonna happen uh, let me test that There's a lot of things I have to input. Oh, and I, I feel like, okay, I was gonna say, create body should return B, and it does, so. And I guess that's good. And the coordinates. Let's have it like negative 200, and 200, and this should be negative 500, and it's coming from Should be zero, and this should be negative one and one. Right, let's see what it looks like right now. Oh, and uh, you should probably turn the gravity off uh, for now. And we can make this 300 to exaggerate the difference. Uh, oh, we still need R. All right. Yeah, so as you can see, it is weird right now. Uh, in the real world, it's not going to look like that. And so let's comment out our old code. Oh, wait, this is the wrong thing. All right. So we can just do dot collision and quantities j and bodies k and somewhere here I probably should have done uh, bodies or b1 equals bodies j and b2 equals bodies k but um, it's fine Wait, uh, I should make the intersection a little more obvious. Right, so it's probably gonna go like this. Yup, and and that that's what I expect to see in the real world. Uh, and let me just uh, show you guys what it looks like without that. So, yeah, it's kind of, it looks much more natural right now. And uh, let's look at uh, another one, this one. Oh, wait, uh, the gravity is off. Yeah, let, let's see how it looks uh, when we enable gravity. Yeah, 
Yeah, so as you can see, the blue one is kind of hard to see with all these moving parts, but the it looks like the blue one is much more affected. Uh, it's kind of like floating away. Maybe. Maybe I should have it so that it bounces off the wall as well. So. It should be before wall collisions. And actually, maybe I should uh, make this go all the way. Uh, no. Yeah, for, for now, I'm just going to uh, do it. Just have uh, three loops. So if J, um, uh, all right, so there are four coordinates and Let's check for the left wall first. Mm -hmm. Dot post dot x. If I guess. Scale is not a global variable. All right, I'm gonna move this to the back, or to the top, I should say. And uh, huh. Oh god, I have to make it, yeah. That's weird. Uh, oh, I have to make it static. Alright, that, that solves some things. I guess that's not really a thing. Yeah, I can only have one of these at a time. Right. That's fine though. Uh, or And we're not only checking for the for the center is out of bounds. For this, we want to check the leftmost position of the vault. So that's going to be minus minus uh, j dot r. And for this, it's going to be plus. Uh, 
is j dot pause val x can't do that because that's also going to make the y negative so maybe I should set a set function like set x and set y I guess we should And usually when you have set, you're supposed to return the original value. But uh, for now, it doesn't matter. Dot. X equals other dot X. Dot Y equals other dot Y. And this dot x equals x, y equals y, as this is basically the same thing as this, but uh, oh, we also need a like and set x and set x um and it says same thing dot x times negative one and all right we're just copy and pasting this to work with y as well and set y all right uh, let's see how that works okay uh, um is weird uh, I don't know what's wrong okay maybe I messed something up nope all right so this is a problem all right uh, Okay, um, hmm.
I'm gonna count and um, It's not good. And I'm just gonna let this do this. It's cleaner, but uh, uh, I was getting off track. All right. Um, if negative scale, so maybe I just have to push that away. Yeah. See what happens now. Okay, so it's still bad. Let's think. Um, scale. All right, negative scale is going to be negative five thousand. And where are we looking right now? Yeah, negative 5,000 is greater than, oh, and maybe we have to switch this one as well. Oh, nice. And I'm, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Forgot to add in the the Y collisions. Let's see. There's nothing yet, but boom. Up oh, there's one. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure that's working normally because yeah wall collisions I'm pretty sure you are like any stationary collisions I'm pretty sure that's how it works yeah but hmm this is very interesting especially having collisions and gravity at the same time Maybe I should have like an enable gravity check or something like that. All right, so right now gravity is off and it looks very good. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the wall collision sign.
Yeah, and uh, all the masses are the same except for the big red one. And uh, may maybe I should just run some basic tests. So, all right, uh, this is the one we already did. If these two are the same and one of them is stationary, then uh, this one's gonna run into this one and this one's gonna stop moving completely and this one's gonna get this one's uh, speed, like uh, Newton's uh, cradles or whatever. Yep, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah. So, when the one moving is, has a bigger mass, then this one, this one should be moving faster, and this one should continue moving. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so if if we make them run in, run into each other, then this this one should get impacted much more. Yeah. And uh hmm. Maybe you can have the light one run into the heavy one. And then this one should bounce off, yeah. All right, that, that's pretty good in terms of the one dimension. And with the two dimensional one, uh, I don't really know ways to check it as thoroughly, but uh, just from looking at it, it looks uh, pretty nice, is what I'm going to say. And I uh, should make this a little bigger. I want to have like 10 of these random things. Oh. Yeah, I guess if we have eight of them, then I want to see what uh, this is. Oh, that. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like stuck onto it. Right, but okay, I'm gonna get rid of that because it's like. glitching everything out but uh right, the big ones are too close right now Oh, is gravity enabled? No. Oh, that's weird. I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but it really looks like gravity is enabled. Hmm. Well, looking at them individually, uh, I realize, I don't know, it's probably just a illusion. And 
Maybe we can make the masses different. I think it goes from right. So this can be like twenty five and it has um no three hundred. Maybe we should speed everything up. There's uh, DT. Hmm. I feel like D time should go outside, but uh, that's fine. All right. Oh, I think my computer's like kind of lagging so the frames aren't entirely consistent but uh yeah that looks pretty cool uh and accurate so let's just see it with gravity and uh, oh okay maybe i should slow this down I don't know if that's just because they're too close or if it's like an actual problem I should be worried about. Uh, I'm gonna change this just a little bit and see when I can get it right. Yeah, I I think the problem is just that the masses are too high like relative to each other, so let's see. Yeah, now it's working pretty normally. I mean, yeah, this happened here, but I guess it's like a, uh, all right, I'm just gonna say it's a, it's like a rounding error and not worry too much about it, but, uh, oh, maybe the gravity's too high. Yeah, I feel like it's fine because it's there's just like two me two little frames per second that everything is moving too fast and so like there's just bound to be one time where uh two objects are moving too fast so that when it like goes when the like the collision detector does the collision thing, uh, they're too close together to actually come apart after the collision, and yeah, I guess it's just bound to happen when you have eight different objects all attracted to each other and. They're all uh, bouncing around the place. But, uh, 
I think other than that, everything's working pretty good. So, um, yeah, I'll put the link to this uh, in the description if you want to mess around with the code. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye.